Hello children, how are you all? I hope you are all learning well in the digital lessons. So, in this digital class, I am here to explain you about the synthetic fibers. In the last session, we have discussed about the nylon and rayon. Now, in this lesson, we are going to study about acrylic and polyesters. These are the other two synthetic fibers we are going to learn. In this lesson, we will be studying about the other two fibers, acrylic and polyester. Let us do an activity. In this lesson, we have studied about fibers. These fibers, when burnt, they smell differently. So, let us do an activity to identify fibers by a burning test. Unravel several warp and weft fibers and burn them and observe the chain. What are these warp and weft fibers? As you have seen in the last class, the fabric is made up of fibers. These fibers are woven by the help of machine loom or hand looms. So, the horizontal fibers and the vertical fibers weaved together forms a fabric. So, this fabric when separated you will get weft and warp fibers. So, these fibers when they are burnt you get different smells. By identifying the smell you can tell which fiber is a natural fiber and which is an artificial fiber. If it smells like burning hair the yarn is wool or silk. So, if you are burning the fiber and you get the smell of burning hair, then the yarn is wool or silk. Why? Because wool is obtained from sheep. It is nothing but the hair of the sheep. Silk is obtained from the cocoon of the silkworm. So, silk and wool when burnt, you get a smell of burning hair. If it smells like burning paper, the yarn may be cotton or rayon. Cotton is obtained from plants. Rayon also, we have learned in the last class, it is obtained from the cellulose. So, cellulose is also from the plant. So, if you are burning cotton fiber or rayon fiber, if you, then you will get the smell of a burning paper then we can identify that the fiber is made up of cotton or rayon. See this experiment, see this activity we have done. This is a cotton fiber burning in the candle and this is a silk fiber burning in the candle. And here we have taken wool fibers and we have burnt in the candle. We have got three different smells. When you burn cotton and this is a nylon fiber burnt in the candle and this also melts but not burns completely. Now what is synthetic fiber? Observe beads and paper clips. Take few paper clips and join them together. Observe the pattern of the clips. So these are the paper clips. In last lesson also we have seen the difference between monomers and polymers. So monomer is a single unit of a polymer. Poly means many. So, mono means one single. So, many is monomers combined together to form a polymer. So, here we can demonstrate by using these paper clips. If you observe, these are the single paper clips. When joined together, you can see they cling to each other and like that they combine, they can be cling to each other and can form a long chain. So, if you consider them as monomers, then this is called as a polymer. One single unit is called as monomer and long chain is called as polymer. So, in the place of paper clips, you can take beads also. Beads like this. A single unit or a bead is called as a monomer and when joined together, they form, they keep forming long chains. So, monomer, then here two beads can be joined, here three beads are joined and here many beads are joined. So, a single monomer forms a long polymer. So, this is about the synthetic fiber. Synthetic fiber is a polymer form. In last lesson, we have studied about 
nylon. You remember the properties of nylon? They are very strong, hard wearing, they do not decompose, melts as it burns, not very absorbent. So it dries quickly and that is why we use nylon for making raincoats and umbrellas. They are crease resistant, resist alkalis but can be damaged by acids. They are versatile and can be made into many types of products and that is why we use nylon in clothing, ropes, carpets and rugs, seat belts etc. And advantages of nylon are strong when wet, inexpensive, resist bacteria, durable and long lasting. Every fiber has got its own disadvantages and what are the disadvantages of nylon? We have studied in the last class. It can be damaged by sunlight which discolors it and makes it weak. It has low absorbency of water and it not always it is comfortable to wear. Now let us see properties of rayon. Effect of heat. It burns and has the same behavior as cotton because it is obtained from cellulose of plant. Effect of light on rayon. It has a good resistance when exposed to light. Reaction of bleach. Bleaching is not required, can be colored, dyed easily. Reaction of alkalis. It shows sensitivity and it is mild soap can be used for washing it. Reaction of acids. It disintegrates. Resistance to insects. It is bad for the insects. Resistance to perspiration. Fabric color might fade when dried under the sun. Affinity for dyes, very good affinity for dyes, you can dye it into any color. Now, if you see this picture, you can see different types of animals here. This is an angora goat, this is an ordinary goat, this is yak, this is a camel, this is a type of sheep called as alpaca and this is llama. All these are the animals which are found in the places where there is very cold. So, the fleece of these animals are collected and wool are being extracted from the, these different types of animals. Then what are these blankets made up of? The, we use such blankets for covering ourselves during winter seasons. We use such types of jackets and sweaters to cover ourselves and protect from cold. We use such type of uh, sweaters to protect ourselves from cold. In very cold regions, they use mostly such heavy jackets to protect themselves from cold. They are all actually not made up of wool. They are made up of acrylic fiber. Acrylic is also called as fake fur. Fake means false. So fake fur means artificial wool. Why is it called as artificial wool? Because it resembles natural wool. How is it made? It is made from a combination of coal, air, water, oil and limestone. It is spun by either dry spinning or wet spinning. The chemicals are being spun into fibers and this fiber is weaved into fabric. So in wet spinning the polymers are dissolved and extruded into a bath and dried out. The wool obtained from the natural resource is quite expensive because the wool obtained from animals will damage the animals and for growing wool for, uh, from each animal it will take again so many years. So be, it becomes very costly for the people living in cold countries to wear sweaters only made up of wools and it is also expensive also then that is why people depend upon acrylic that is fake fur so whereas clothes made up of acrylic are relatively cheap now observe these articles these are the hand gloves this is a doormat these are the shoes this is a baby uh, keychain which is made up of fleece, tablecloths, these are the hand gloves. Now see these things, they are all made up of acrylic. Let us see what are all the uses of acrylic. To make knitted apparels such as fleece, to make knitted apparels. Now you can see the shoes and the gloves and the sweaters and the jackets and different types of shawls, all these can be knit. The fibers can be knitted to make socks, gloves, sportswear and sweaters. 
these are all the uses of acrylic the acrylic can also be used for making carpets luggage awnings and vehicle covers what are luggage awnings you can see this suitcase is covered with a cover this will not damage or spoil the suitcase inside so it can be carried anywhere so it is even heat resistant and cold resistant and that is why this luggage is covered with luggage awning it is made up of acrylic now you can see vehicle covers here and here and even the ventilator covers also here these are all made up of acrylic because acrylic is strong it also covers uh, the shades from cold and rain now let us see the properties of acrylic it is strong when it is dry but weaker when it is wet shrinks away from heat it is a thermoplastic it burns slowly then melts it is soft and that is why it is used to make fleece or fur artificial fur it is warm and cozy and that is why we use it to cover ourselves in winter seasons it is easy to wash and dry see the uses it is used to make knitwear upholstery fabrics fake fur sportswear and even toys these teddy bears and all we play what are all these made up of artificial fiber that is acrylic fake fur what are the advantages of acrylic it is warm it is soft insulating that means it will not allow the heat to escape from our body and protects us from cold it is inexpensive we keep buying such toys isn't it it is inexpensive it dries quickly we also wash these toys fur toys and dry them now what are the disadvantages it ha has poor absorbency it absorbs very less amount of water the examples of acrylic are cartelli and amico these are the fiber names under acrylic now see these pictures this is a cloth which is kept in the spectacles box you feel it you observe it and you hold the texture and observe it this is a polyester dress here this is a bottle which is made up of polyester this is a jacket which is made up of polyester this is a cloth which is made up of polyester these are all the things which are made up of polyester see the shine and the texture then these are all the items which are made up of polyester it is a fabric made from polyester fiber it does not get wrinkled easily it remains crisp and is easily washable so it is quite suitable for making dress materials terrilin is an example of polyester it is a very popular polyester where is this terrilin used what is this this is a tie this is a cloth used for making trousers and this is a cloth which is used for making shirts even threads which are used in the sewing machines they are made up of terrilin so terrilin is a popular polyester it can be drawn into very fine fabric fibers that can be woven like any other fibers this fibers blend well with the natural fibers terrilin is often mixed with cotton to make terricot terrilin when blended with cotton it forms terricot and terrilin when blended with wool it forms terry wool so terrilin it has a characteristic property cotton has a characteristic property cotton protects us from heat it is worn in summer seasons so terrilin when mixed with cotton gives us a very good quality of fabric that is called as terricot now terrilin when mixed with wool gives us a very good fabric called as terry wool these are all the fabrics which are used in gents wear now let us see the polyesters now polyesters are produced from coal air water and petrochemicals how are polyesters made it is a polymer produced from coal air water and petrochemicals we have seen what is a petrochemical in the last class what about the strength of polyesters it is very strong and it has a very low elasticity you pull it it will not be pulled it will get stretched but it will not go back to its original position it will not takes its own shape it absorbs very less water it can be washed very easily and it will not shrink it will not shrink and that is why it will not even have wrinkles 
so it can be washed easily and maintained easily so it can be used to make different types of dress materials both for men and women now let us see the different types of uses of polyesters in making ties sportswear curtains stewing threads medical textiles and in carpets so these are all the different uh, types of fabrics we use in our houses which are made up of polyesters so next time you observe any of these sub uh, things in your house you have to identify with what material or with what fiber are these made up of now polyester is also used to make many products like pet polyethylene terphthalate what is this this is a type of a petrochemical which is used to make a type of plastic called as pet polyethylene terphthalate where is it used it is used in making bottles kindle bisleri water bottles utensils plastic utensils we use at home in the kitchen films wires nets luggages containers etc these are all the different types of articles made by polyethylene terphthalate now before going to the different types of plastic i would like to tell about the resin identification code ric have you ever wondered about those little numbers with the arrows around them on the bottom of the plastic containers what are they called as they are called as resin identification codes and they indicate the type of the plastic that an item is made up of we have seven resin identification codes every article will have a particular code on it and by that you can identify the type of plastic it is made up of these numbers alone do not indicate whether a package is recyclable but can be used in conjunction with instructions from your community to help you to the know the type of plastic that can be recycled where you live so you can identify what type of plastic it is and you can send it for recycling if it is recyclable like this you can even save the environment from pollution as you know plastic is non biodegradable it will take years together for getting degraded so you have to protect your environment from pollution yes, so to save our environment from plastics you have to send your plastics identify the resin identification codes and send them for recycling so what is the use of this code system code system was actually developed to meet recyclers needs while providing manufacturers as a consistent uniform system that could apply nationwide so municipal recycling programs are also there they have recycled even primary bottles containers and by using the resin identification codes they have identified that whether the articles are recyclable or not and they have sent it for recycle plastic resin codes now if you take one one means p e t e now what are the materials which are made up of pete -E, polyethylene terphthalate cold drink cups soft drink bottles water bottles peanut butter containers bottles used for storage cooking trays these are all the items which have these number at the bottom you can identify them then you will understand that these are all the things which are made up of the plastic made up of P E T E polyethylene terphthalate now this is the second code hdpe that means high density polyethylene what are the articles made up of hdpe detergent bottles food service film wraps clear food packaging window cleaner bottles cooking oil bottles etc so these are all the articles made up of hdpe high density polyethylene number 3 that means pvc polyvinyl chloride what are the articles made up of pvc milk jugs cleaner bottles trash can can liners juice bottles butter and yogurt containers and even the water pipes which are used in your houses now four four means ldpe ldpe means low density polyethylene what are the articles made up of ldpe squeezable bottles bread bags frozen food bags on these items you can identify a number 4 that means these are all the articles which are made up of low density polyethylene now 5 5 means ps polystyrene these are all the articles which are made up of polystyrene take out containers different plates and bowls cutlery syrup bottles 
ketchup bottles etc on these are you can find a number 5 written pp on, on the containers that means these are all the articles made up of polystyrene even the fridge covers computer covers are also made up of polystyrene number 6 ps that means polystyrene now what are all the items made up of uh, number 6 disposable plates meat trays disposable cups egg cartons carry out containers and straws now with the code 7 that means other plastics these plastics include acrylic polycarbonate nylon fiberglass composable plastics polylactic acid these are all the different uh, plastics which come under the seventh type of uh, plastics then what are the articles made up of them now let us do another activity identification of articles with various recycling codes you have to collect few bottles like juice bottles, fruit jams, ketchup, shampoo, coffee powder and observe, look at the triangle given at the bottom and write down the RIC of those bottles in your book. See for example, to identify uh, this number, for example, these are all the articles made up of code number 1 uh, plastic. Code number 1 plastic means PETE -E, polyethylene terphthalate. So, at the bottom of these plastic bottles, PET will be written. At the bottom of your cool drink bottles, PET will be written. At the bottom of these containers, also PET will be written. So, identify the articles in your house on every bottle or any on every container you can see, and you have to note down the names of the things which have a particular code on them in your notebook. Now, advantages of polyester. It is strong when wet and dries quickly. It is crease resistant. It has low cost and best wash and wear fabric. It has a even a good resistant for the bacteria. It is a versatile fiber. So, can be made into many products. Now, every fiber disadvantages also. What are the disadvantages of polyester? It has a poor absorbency. So, it is difficult to dye. It cannot be dyed into different colors. It reacts with any chemicals like acids and base and even it holds oil stains. Now let us come to the next topic, plastics. Plastic is also a polymer like many other synthetic fiber. In plastics, the monomers are arranged in two ways. Like we have seen, all the monomers join together. All the monomers join together in a form of a long chain is called as a polymer. Then, if these polymers, they are branched, then it forms a plastic. So, polymerization means formation of polymers from monomers. If there are two types of polymerization, addition polymerization and condensation polymerization. Here, after polymerization, if you get a linear straight chain, then it is called as a linear molecule then some molecules are also joined in the form of a branch. So, such uh, huge molecules they form plastics. So, these plastics are available in different shapes and sizes. So, there are different types of plastics. We will be learning about the properties of plastics in this lesson. There are two types of plastics mainly thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics. Here the picture itself tells that the smallest minute things in the kitchen used are nothing but thermoplastics and the wires and the different types of articles in your dining room, diet, drawing room also are made up of thermoplastics. Now these are the thermosetting plastics, your keyboard, uh, the switchboards, fuses are all thermosetting plastics. We will be learning about it in this lesson. Now what are thermoplastics? Plastics which get deformed easily, deformed means change of shape. When you heat it, they change their shape, they melt and they change their shape, they completely get deformed. They get melted, they change their shape and you can bend them on heating. Such are called as thermoplastics. For example, the articles made up of polyethylene and PVC are all made up of thermoplastics. These are used in manufacturing toys combs and various types of containers. See here the pet bottles, the polythene bags, the ordinary types of containers, plastics are all coming under 
thermoplastic the toys also these all melt and ch change their shape and they get completely deformed on heating such plastics are called as thermoplastics now thermosetting plastics this is a second type of thermosetting plastic there are some plastics which are which on molded ones can't be softened by heating they are thermosetting plastics see here earlier thermoplastic got softened and deformed but here these plastics they are not getting softened they are not becoming soft on heating then what are thermosetting plastics they are the plastics which molded ones cannot be softened for example bakelite and melamine melamine is mostly used to make the dinner sets then what is bakelite the pressure cooker handles or the keyboard these are all made up of bakelite so these are all the different uh, examples of uh, thermosetting plastic articles see here the electronic things like phones keyboards are all made up of thermosetting plastics the um, cloth hangers so the cloth clips we use at homes the different types of water bottles the different types of electronic things the switches fuses are all made up of thermosetting plastics now if you observe here if you are taking the plastic and fixing it to a clamp then on heating the plastic with the bunsen burner you can see the plastic is melting so this plastic thermoplastic melts on heating whereas thermosetting plastic it is not melting on heating so this is a thermosetting plastic which is fixed to a clamp if you heat it by using burn it by using a bunsen burner you can see it is not melting see the difference between a thermoplastic and a thermosetting plastic you can identify such plastics at your home also by so doing a small activity see this lab activity given in your textbook i have taken a candle here now take different types of plastic materials in available in your house and keep burning it i have taken the handle of a brush toothbrush and observe the melting process i have taken a old comb so you observe it it is melting now like this keep on burning few materials but this is a broken bucket piece take care that you always use tongs now this is a cooker handle this is a thermo setting plastic now this is a plastic which is melting on heating now this is a scale see how is it burning now this is a tupperware lid see whether it is melting or not like this you do this activity at home by taking care that you are not burning your hands and burn such articles and observe which is a thermoplastic and which is not a thermoplastic plastics are non reactive they do not corrode they are very light but very strong they are durable and can be molded into different shapes and sizes they are cheaper than metals so we prefer plastics what do we have learned in this lesson let us summarize Acrylic is an artificial wool. It is made up of coal, air, oil and limestone. We have studied about polyester. It is a synthetic fiber. There are two types of plastics we have seen, thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics. We have seen examples. Children, I hope you have understood the lesson. Now, to test yourself, try to answer these questions given in your textbook and also in this slide. improve your learning by answering these questions why synthetic fibers are more referred than natural fibers what are the uses of acrylic and rayon what are thermoplastics and what are thermo setting plastics so you have to answer these questions and write it in your notebook i hope you have understood the lesson so for a better learning and a good practice please download the worksheet which is present in the cert website and improve your learning in again in the next session thank you